Welcome to Missing the Mark, where we look for meaning in strange places. I'm Christopher. Today we'll be talking about what probability means in the real world. This is a companion video to my previous video about the problem with probability, which talked about how the mathematics of probability don't apply to the real world. I've discovered that there was some confusion, though, because there is something very different which we use in everyday life and also call probability. This is the sort of thing we use when we say that throwing a brick at a window will probably break it, or that if I stop paying my car payments, the bank will probably take away my car. This is not mathematical probability at all, and it's got quite a lot to do with the real world. When we say that hitting a window with a brick will probably break it, we are simultaneously expressing two things. The first is that there is a causal connection between hitting a window with a brick and it breaking. We know the properties of a brick, that it's got mass and therefore momentum when thrown and is quite hard, and we know the properties of a window, that it is hard but inelastic and won't deform when stressed, so when force is applied in excess of its tensile strength, it will shatter. These things are connected to each other in a direct way. The other thing we are expressing is that we live in a complex world where there are a great many things we don't know. For example, we don't know how hard the person will throw the brick. A very gentle throw, which just barely bumps into the window, will not break it, nor will a high shot that glances off the window on the way down with very little forward force. Some windows are thicker than others. Some windows are made of tempered glass. Some windows are not even made of glass at all, but rather Lexan. Some are a thin, relatively flexible layer of glass bonded to Lexan. That's a common form of bulletproof glass, I believe. Most windows are just made of ordinary window glass of ordinary thickness, but we have no way of knowing, in general, what a particular window is made of, so we can't say for certain that the brick will break it. What we are expressing is not that the causal relationship we know about doesn't always work, but that it may not apply. We might be dealing with something other than we thought we were. With the brick in the window, we can make sure of our facts, then be certain of the outcome. We can check that the particular brick has no flaws, ensure how we will throw the brick so it strikes the window with more than enough force, and verify what material the window is made of. We can also put up a net so that no birds will fly in the way, and so forth. In short, this type of probability is an acknowledgement of the limitations of our knowledge, but they are limitations to a knowledge which is of the world we live in. Moreover, Knowing many things about this world broadly, there are limits not only to our knowledge, but to our ignorance. We cannot predict the weather, but we know that it is variable so no trend continues forever. We know that populations of animals invariably follow a boom-bust cycle. If there are giant numbers of deer this year, there will soon be large numbers of wolves, so while we can't be sure that this year won't have so many deer that they eat most of our crops, we know that if there is, there won't be in a few years. Though the individual years are unpredictable, the decadal cycles are not because we know that there are feedback mechanisms. In the worst case, many of us can switch to deer hunting until farming works again. All of these are things we know about the world, and that knowledge curtails the ignorance, which curtails our more particular knowledge. Incidentally, you can see where the generalization from this sort of knowledge of the world fails by looking at gamblers. People who are certain that their luck will turn around before they go broke are mistaking knowledge for how life usually works for knowledge about a system which does not work that way. A fair coin will eventually turn up roughly equal proportions of heads and tails, but you might well be broke long before that happens, because there is no feedback cycle which makes the coin more likely to come up heads after a run of 25 tails. There is a sense in which gambling dens are a look at what an atheistic world would really look like. Anyway, this interplay between knowledge and ignorance forms the bulk of our lives. We must make choices, but we know only the very immediate specifics and the general rules of the world. In between those two lie a very great many things which impact us, but of which we are ignorant. This has misled many philosophers into thinking that our lives are nothing but ignorance. Though, I should mention that I don't know of any way to say that, from atheistic grounds, they're wrong. If we're on our own, we do live in ignorance. This is why so many people turn to mathematical probability to try to save them. They're looking for a way to turn ignorance into knowledge. It won't work, but you can see why the desire is there. The real solution to this problem is that we rationally fit into the world. 
If the world was designed for us and we for the world, and if we desire the good of all things, then by following our best understanding of that good, that is, by acting virtuously, we will in fact achieve what we intend. This is the only condition in which we can achieve what we intend, despite the limits of our knowledge, since this is the only condition in which our knowledge can benefit from the greater knowledge of our Creator. Incidentally, this is what is meant by the phrase, true freedom consists in obeying God's will. Will can only move towards what is apprehended by the intellect, and since our intellect is extremely limited, if we do not move our will towards our place in the world, we can only grope around in the dark. We can see what's a few inches in front of us, but no further. Think of it like a microscope. It lets you see things you never could otherwise, but only if you use it the way that it was meant to be used. If you sit on it, or kick it around like a soccer ball, or pour egg into the eyepiece hoping the microscope will cook it, you will get no benefit from the microscope. Only by using it as it was designed, only by looking through the eyepiece, can you see further than your own limited vision. So, this is what probability really is. It is our humility in recognizing what we know and what we don't know, keeping them separate, and acting only on what we do actually know. That's all for now. Until next time, may you hit everything you aim at.